In some cases, if the baby is severely ill, we need to also establish vascular access, be able to have some type of a catheter where we can give medications in case we need to help the heart beat harder or faster. Whoa! That was a big one. giving the trainees all those NICU secrets, teaching the families, bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU doc. And today we're gonna to be talking about something called congenital diaphragmatic hernia or CDH. We're gonna talk about what is CDH? How did this actually occur? How common is CDH? And then how do you manage that both medically and surgically? And make sure you stick to the end because we're gonna be talking about a research type of procedure called FIDO. Wanna learn more about that? Make sure you watch all the way to the end. All right, let's get to today's video. All right, so what exactly is congenital diaphragmatic hernia or CDH? Well, this is a congenital, meaning it's a problem that occurred during the formation in utero. It is diaphragmatic, meaning it involves the diaphragm, which is one of the major muscles of respiration. And it's a hernia, meaning it has something that is protruding through a hole. So approximately around eight weeks of gestation, organs are being made. And about 10 weeks, the diaphragm, again, the major muscle of respiration, is being made. And this muscle essentially is a big, huge flap of muscle that separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. Now, during the formation with congenital diaphragmatic hernia, it doesn't form completely. Normally, again, it's a flat structure of muscle that separates the two cavities. But in this case, there is an incomplete closure of that muscle, and certain areas are left either with small holes, or you can even have a hole defect where practically most of the muscle is missing. And in general, this occurs in approximately one in every 2,000 to one in every 3,000 live births. Now, the hole can occur on the right side, or more commonly on the left side. This is left-sided CDH. And about 80% of the time, this defect occurs on the left side. So as I mentioned before, the main function of the diaphragm is to help with respiration. It contracts and it basically opens up the chest even more so you can go ahead and take nice deep breaths. It sort of generates this negative pressure so you can take a nice deep breath and expand those lungs. But another part of the diaphragm is separating the two cavities. If you have a hole between that, now that separation doesn't occur. And what ends up happening is that there tends to be more pressure in the abdomen, so the intestines will actually seep up through that hole. That's the hernia part. Remember I talked about something protruding through a hole? That's where the hernia name comes from, from CDH the intestines can go through and actually fill the cavity of the chest. If it's on the left side, obviously it's gonna fill the left side of the cavity first. This not only causes a problem when you're trying to generate, when you're trying to develop and create and grow lung on that side, you can imagine that as you're trying to expand and grow that lung, if you've got intestines in that cavity, you're not gonna grow the lung very well. And so you have a smaller lung than what is expected. This is something called lung hypoplasia or pulmonary hypoplasia. But not only is that the problem on that side, but you can imagine as more intestine is coming in, it actually also pushes and squishes the other side. So you may have also lung hypoplasia on the right side, even if you did have a left-sided CDH. 
So we talked about that lung hypoplasia, not being able to have enough space for you to be able to grow good lung and get oxygen into the body when you take nice deep breaths. When you're first born, you do that crying. But another part of the issue here is that because it's been squished, the blood vessels in the area of the lung itself, they're not formed correctly. And when they're not formed correctly, this actually causes something called pulmonary hypertension. The blood vessels in itself tend to have much higher pressures so that it takes a hard, much stronger beats to try and get blood into the lungs. And sometimes if it's not possible, if you can't get enough blood, that means you can't get enough oxygen into the lungs. And so you have hypoxemia or low oxygen. If you're not familiar with the word hypoxemia or low oxygen in the bloodstream or desaturations, go ahead and click right here so you can go ahead and see the video on desaturations. Okay, let's move on. Not only can you get lung hypoplasia, meaning small set of lungs, not only can you get pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure in the lungs, but then you also have thickening between the airway or the air sac or alveolus and the blood stream or blood vessel making it much more difficult for oxygen to seep through that layer. It's, get, it's got to travel much, much, much more distance to get to the blood vessel. So these are three mechanisms why babies who are born with CDH, if severe enough, they tend to have low oxygen in the bloodstream and it's very hard for them to get oxygen in to be able to uh, oxygenate the whole body and be able to survive. So the management is both surgical and medical. It's really important to understand that when you're managing babies with CDH, this is a multidisciplinary care team, meaning it is not just one doctor and a few nurses. This actually requires a lot of different specialties to be involved so to receive the best care that the baby can get. So not only is it a surgeon and a neonatologist or a baby specialist, you may have a cardiologist, a heart doctor, a pulmonologist, a lung doctor, you have a nutritionist, you have a physical therapy. So there are so many different specialties that need to come in to be able to help these babies thrive and develop. The management basically begins in utero when the baby is a fetus. You're gonna have maternal fetal medicine specialists with in, in touch with your OBGYN to be able to best manage these patients and get them ready for delivery. You really wanna do the delivery of a CDH patient in a fetal care program that is used to caring for these patients because they can be extremely sick. And when they get very sick, they may need to receive a surgical intervention immediately, something called ECMO or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And I'll explain that when we get to the surgical part. Going back to the medical part, let's talk about how the delivery goes. Upon delivery, the main thing that needs to happen is to determine how bad is the lung hypoplasia? How bad are those really small lungs and how difficult is it for us to be able to oxygenate or be able to give oxygen to the baby? This will be determined immediately upon the baby arriving at the warmer. You're gonna have the neonatologist, you're gonna have the surgeon, you may have the whole team in there evaluating and determining if we can use some oxygen just with a mask in the mouth or back mask ventilation, or do we need to have a breathing tube, meaning a plastic tube into the trachea, into the windpipe to be able to deliver good pressure and oxygen enough to be able to oxygenate the organs of the body. So once we have established an airway, meaning either through a mask or an endotracheal tube, a plastic tube into the trachea, we now need to make sure the heart is doing okay and the perfusion is doing okay, meaning are we getting blood flow into the body. Sometimes, if not able to, we will go ahead and put a vascular access or some type of an IV, essentially a catheter, into the umbilical site. So we do this using an umbilical line or umbilical artery or vein catheter. This goes literally where the umbilical cord was cut. We can use the little uh, blood vessels. If you haven't seen my video already, I will go ahead and put it up here. And it's a video describing how do we actually place an umbilical artery or vein catheter. Okay, 
So once you have established those two, you basically have good perfusion and you have a good, you've established a stable airway, then the baby can move to an intensive care unit, whether it's done in the NICU, sometimes it's done in a surgical ICU. At that point, it is now determined whether surgery needs to happen fairly soon or if you can wait a few days, stabilize, make sure the baby's doing okay before you need to. Sometimes we have to use a special type of ventilator, some, something called an oscillator or high frequency jet ventilator. These are essentially types of ventilators that we can use high pressures to be able to get good amount of oxygen in. If you're not familiar with high frequency jet ventilation or oscillation, I'm gonna put up here a video so you can go ahead and check out what the oscillator is and how it functions. Now, if we're not able to get good oxygen in with the ventilator and with all the things that we've talked about, then we have to do something called ECMO. And this is where the surgeons come in. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO is essentially a way that we can give oxygen by means of a machine. If the lungs are so small and the baby's not able to oxygenate well, then what we have to do is remove the blood from the baby and then the machine actually oxygenates. It's called a perfusion machine. It oxygenates that blood and then gives it back to the baby, essentially acting like a lung bypass machine, very similar to what is done when they're doing heart surgery where they put a cardiac or a heart bypass machine. In this case, this is the lung. It's a machine basically acting as a lung. And this allows the surgeons to be able to do their surgery and to be able to allow the baby to recover after the surgery until eventually the baby can breathe on its own. So let's talk about the surgery that is done. So if there is a hole in the actual diaphragm, they need to patch that hole. And so what the surgeons will do, and again, my disclaimer, not a surgeon here, so I can't tell you the details of that. But I do know what they do is they actually use a special type of plastic uh, to patch the hole that's on the diaphragm. Sometimes it's a very small hole, easy to do, and the surgery is not complicated. Sometimes it's a massive hole and the surgery can take several hours to be able to make sure that there are no leaks, that there is no areas where new intestine can come in or that it breaks. And so it can take a while, recovery can take a while too, but eventually the goal of this is to be able to keep the intestines back in the abdominal cavity, keep the lungs in the chest cavity. And with this, in time, there may be some degree of growth from that lung hypoplasia. Most of it is really just kind of expanding and developing uh, tissue that is there uh, that was formed already. All right, all right, all right. So you stuck all the way to the end and I appreciate that. And so I'm gonna tell you something most people don't know. And this is the type of research that they're doing to be able to help patients with CDH when they're inside the uterus as a fetus. And this is something called FETO or fetoscopic endotracheal occlusion. What does that mean? Fetoscopic, you're using some type of little camera on the fetus, endotracheal, endo inside trachea, the actual windpipe, and occlusion, you're closing it. And that's exactly what they're doing. So what are they occluding? This goes back to what we talked about at the start of the video. If there is higher pressure in the abdomen than the lungs, then the intestines are gonna wanna go through that hole into the lungs. However, if we occlude the trachea, we actually put like a blocker or a lid on the trachea, it's going to allow the lungs to have higher pressures as they're still developing in there. And then it's going to make it less likely for the intestines to be able to protrude or at least not completely, maybe a small amount. And that can be easier to do surgery on. So how do they do this? Well, this is done in a very controlled fashion. What they do is they go in with a needle that at the end, it turns into a catheter once it's inside with a balloon. And this little catheter, very much like an endotracheal tube or a breathing tube, will actually go through the mouth 
into the area of the trachea of the baby. Then that little balloon is inflated and left there as they remove the catheter and the needle. Again, the idea is that that balloon is placed to be able to increase the pressure and make it harder for the intestines to want to go up, allowing the lungs to continue to develop appropriately and have a normal size or as close to normal as possible. This is usually done around 28, 28 to maybe 30 weeks gestation, uh, at least from most of the studies that I've read. And it's still an ongoing process. They're still trying to determine whether it can be safe. They do this in different programs, such as the program at Cincinnati Children's, at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They also do this at the Johns Hopkins University Medical Center and other programs around the country. If you're interested, I'm gonna put their links below in the comment section. In the, and so you can go ahead and click on those links for more information. Okay, well, thank you so much again for sticking with me all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. If you like this, please go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so. And please, any questions or comments, I really always appreciate all the you know, super likes and all the wonderful comments. And again, if you guys have questions about CDH and ECMO, definitely go ahead and put them down here in the comments section. And then also, if you haven't done so already, Follow me on Instagram, I'm very active. I'm posting stuff pretty much every single day. It's all educational stuff and we can definitely converse uh, on Instagram through comments and so on and so forth. So thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you with the next video.